Let's pray. Avinu Sheba Shemaim, we are coming before you. We thank you for the opportunity to be together, Lord, to enjoy the time with each other and to enjoy the time with you. We thank you for your word and we are asking that now you will speak to each and one of us, Lord, in this morning, Lord. We are asking that you will restore the first love into our life, so that we will again love you with all of our heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. Um, yesterday I understood that I'm going also to share in this morning. So I took something from the archive that I have. And those of you that have been in one of the conferences of PFI, so you will hear it again or similar things. In uh, any case, the subject is connected to love. We just uh, study about the covenant, and the covenant is connecting to love. The love of God to the world, the love of God to the nation of Israel, and because of that, is care for them. And as we read in Exodus, that he took them, he, he showed his love for them by that that he carried them like eagle carry his uh, kids, his child, his uh, a bird. So, this morning, as we are going to uh, meditate about the Lord's Supper that soon we are going to have, I was thinking that to speak about this important passage, important uh, subject, it's very, very suitable. You remember the question that the Lord asked Peter, do you love me? And if we will do the application to our life today, do we love God? Let's read John chapter 21. Uh, if somebody will read and I will stop him again and again. Okay, thank you. You notice that it's written here, the Sea of Tiberias? Until now it was the Sea of Galilee, or the Sea of Genosau, but here it was, it's written, the Sea of, of Tiberias. The Gospel of John was written the last, and in that time Tiberias was already a, a city that there is much habited in there. Tiberias was born in 20 AD, but in the beginning, Tiberius were habited with Jews that were scattered from the other Jews because it was a, a cemetery there, or people that are not Jews were living there. So Jesus wasn't ministry in Tiberius at all. Because he came first to whom? To the nation of Israel. Okay, continue please. Thank you. Who, we, who do we have here? We have Simon, we have Toma, we have Nathanael, the two of the sons of Zebedee. 
it's John and his brother. Until now we have five and two others. What's happened to John when he's writing this gospel? He forgot who are the others? No, 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 he didn't forget. There is a purpose why he said to others. We will see it in the continuation of the, of the message. What Simon said, continue please. Thank you. So, what was the profession of Simon Peter? Fisherman. The Lord is not around. What he's going to do? He's going to work. He's not willing to sit idle at home. He wants to work. What is his work? What he knows how to do? He knows how to fish. So he's going to fish. And the other, join him. Please continue. And then, sorry, they didn't cut anything. It's rare. Now, where they have been, they've been in the Sea of Galilee. They know the Sea of Galilee. They know where there is fish. And in that area, it's when it's hot springs are coming to the Sea of Galilee. And the, the fish in the Sea of Galilee like warm water. So, he has been in that area, and he caught nothing. Continue, please. Thank you. What's the difference if the net is in the right side or the left side? There is no difference. The disciples know about it. Peter's, Simon Peter knows about it. He knows that there is no difference if he will cast out the net here, in the right side, in the left side, in the front, in the back. It's the same. And he's a fisherman. And there is somebody in the show that suggests to them something strange. And what he did? He obeyed. And because of his obedience, they caught a multitude of fish that they even couldn't carry it. Continue, please. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> the beloved disciple of the Lord. Who is the beloved disciple of the Lord? John. John knew the heart of Jesus. You remember that in the Lord's Supper, he leaned on his heart. And when he understood what had happened, a strange man saying to them, cast the net in the right side, and they find fishes, he understood. The other disciple didn't understand. But when, but when John is saying to Peter, Peter receive that this is the Lord. And Peter, that is probably have ADHD, how did this... <laughs> couldn't sit still, if this is the Lord, I'm going to see him. It will be just a few minutes before the others, but I, jumping into the sea, swimming, just to see the Lord. Continue.
Thank you. They came to the show, and already on the show, the breakfast is ready. But yet Jesus is saying to them, bring some of the fish. Did Jesus need the fish? No. There is already a fish on the fire. But it's like Jesus is saying to us, bring from what that you can to my kingdom, to my work. And he will use it. Please continue. Thank you. John remembered that it was 153 fishes on the net. Come on. Why to remember these kind of numbers? So, there is tax collector everywhere. And when a, a, a boat taking a fish, they need to pay taxes. Like you pay here in England and we are paying in Israel. How you are paying taxes according to each fish that you are uh, taking out from the sea. So they will not take the sardines, the little fish, because they don't want to pay tax of, on something small that they cannot, that in one bite they are finishing it. If they need to pay tax, so it will be tax on something well. So they need to count. And the tax collector said, how many fishes do you have? 153. Okay, you need to pay such and such. This is the way that it worked in the time. So they count the fish and they need to pay taxes on them. Continue, please. Jesus said, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Thank you. Okay, and here we are coming to the question that I asked before. Do you love me? So, the Lord Jesus is asking Peter here in this, sub, in this passage three times. Soon we are going to read it, but first we will read some other things. He's asking three times, do you love me? And this is a very important question that we, even today, need to ask ourselves, do we love God? But before we we'll continue in that, in, that, in that place, in that passage, let's go to other passages that speaking about loving God. John chapter 14, verse 15. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, so you will obey my commandment. Jesus is saying here to the old disciple in the Passover meal, If you love me, you will obey my commandment. In verse 21, he's saying the one that is holding my commandment and keeping them is the one that loves me. And the love me, the one that loves me, my father we love him, and I will love him and present myself to him. Sorry about my English, I'm doing a translation from the, the place. So again, he's asking them about the love. If you love me, you will obey my commandment. 
And again he's speaking in verse 23. The one that loves me, what will do? Will keep my word. And my father will love him. And will come to him and dwell with him. And even in verse 24. The one that, is do that doesn't love me will not keep my word. So here he's saying four times. If you love me, you will keep my commandment. The one that said that, love, that he is loving the Lord need to keep his commandment. And when we have a repetition of the same things again and again in the same passage, it means that the Lord wants to speak to us want to emphasize something to us. And here Jesus wants to emphasize to his disciple. It's just before he's, he was giving to the priest to, to, the, to, 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 to die. Just before that, he's saying to them, if you love me, you need to keep my commandment. Jesus is interesting in relationship. Not just in legal, in legis, legal things, in things that are le uh, legal. What you can do and what you are not, you cannot do. How it's right to, play, to pray and how it's not. More than all, is interesting in relationship, the personal relationship with him, that we will love him from all our heart, all our soul, all our being, all our strength. Let's look in Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 1 to 3. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. Can somebody read? The angel of the church in Ephesus, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this, I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men, and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles, but they are not, and you found them to be false, and you have perseverance, and have endured for my name's sake, and have not grown weary. Thank you. This is the, the, the church in Ephesians. It looks very nice. They have perseverance. The Lord so their deeds, and their work. They cannot tolerate evil. They have a discernment. They have patience. They suffer because of his name. They are not tired. It's a good church. It looks like, isn't it? Yes. Until now, yes. But look what it's written in verse 4. Please. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent. Do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Thank you. The church in Ephesus are doing great. They are working hard for the Lord. They have patience. They cannot bear the evil one. They have a spiritual discernment. They are suffering from the Lord. But one thing they lost. 
they lost the first love. And because of that, God is saying to them, Jesus is saying to them, that if they will not repent and go back to the first deed, he's going to take the lamp from their place. Wow! Even that they are working so hard to the Lord, yet the Lord is reproving them, is condemning them. Let's look what were the first deeds that the church in Ephesus have done. In order to, do, to look on that, let's look in Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verses 18 to 20. Acts 19, verses 18 to 20. Many of those men that received the faith came and confessed and spoke about their deeds. Many that were, were uh, busy in witchcraft took all of their books and burned them before all. They would calculate and find that their prices were 50,000 drachma. In this force, in this power, the word of the Lord were um, flourish. The people in Ephesus were pagan, like all the other nation in that time. It wasn't something specifically to Ephesus. But in Ephesus, it was a special temple. And there, there is many people that were dealing with witchcraft. And they have books. And in that time, books wasn't like now, that we have so free, that we have so much, and it's not costing so much money. In that time, it was costing much more. They didn't sell the books to others after that they came to know the Lord, because they knew that it's wrong. And they didn't want that others will have it. So if it's wrong, they are burning them. And someone with a mathematician a mind start to calculate how much it's going to how much it cost. And he calculate and he find that it's fifty thousand drachma. Now what is or oh, silver coin? What is this drachma or silver coin? It's one it's worth one day of work. Okay? Fifty thousand days of work. How much is a day of work in England? Sixty pound? Is less? Hmm? Eighty? Okay, let's say that it's sixty pound. Sixty pound time fifty thousand. How much is it? Three million. Three million pound. What you can do is three million pound. Yaakov. <laughs> three million pound. When we just read it, we don't notice little things that some of the time are important. This was their first love. To the Lord. They loved them with all of their heart. They didn't want to sell this, those books. Because those books. Are evil books. They are burning them. Even that they knew. That they saved so much money. In order to buy it. Now. Maybe 30, maybe 40 years passed by since the Ephesians burned their books. And now John is in Patmos when he's writing the, the, the revelation. 
And those Ephesians, or that they are died, or they are still living, I remember what happened 35 years ago. So those Ephesians slowly, slowly become compromised, lukewarm. And they lost the first love that they had. The first love, you remember when you got married? I hope so. The first love that you had to your husband or to your wife. After some years, this love, it's a bit becoming lukewarm. And it's the same with the love of us to the Lord. And the Lord here rebuke the Ephesians that their love to him becoming lukewarm. And what he is saying, do the first deeds, first things that you have done and repent. Does the worries of life are chunking us, bearing us burdens that from many, from so many burdens, so many things that we are doing, if it's for the Lord or if it's for work or if it's to receive money and to, to, to live, our relationship with the Lord become cold. Let's look on another example that we have. We spoke about it a bit yesterday, about King Solomon. First King, chapter 3, verses 3 to 5. First King, chapter 3, verses 3 to 5. And Solomon loved the Lord to walk in the statues of his father David. Maybe somebody can continue reading. First King chapter three verses three to five. As Solomon, as Solomon loved the Lord. Okay. Solomon loved the Lord. In that altar, he bought 1,000 burnt offering. Wow. He loved the Lord with all of his heart, and he has a large heart. 1,000 burnt offering. You know, the burnt offering, it symbolizes a dedication to the Lord. The sacrifice, all of it, it's burning to the Lord. Nobody is allowed to eat from it. It's not like the other sacrifice. Solomon loved the Lord. First King Chapter 5, verse 9. And God gave Solomon much wisdom and a, a, a wide heart, like, it's written wide heart? In your language? Okay, somebody can read it, please.
Okay, fine. Uh, so let's look in chapter 4, verse 29. Chapter 4, verse 29. We have different uh, uh, version. Sorry. Okay, in here it's written, and a wide heart. He has a wide heart, he has a large heart. Not that his heart was larger than the regular heart, but his love was large. And he show his love in a large way. Extra, 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 extra large. And because of that, he also loved others. He loved women. And he loved other things. And the Lord is revealing himself to Solomon. He revealed himself first in the chapter 3, as we read. He was revealing himself in a, in a dream. And in chapter 9... After the dedication of the temple, again, God, in verse 2, he revealing himself to Solomon. And he's saying to him, in, in verse 3, I heard your prayer. In verse 4, now if you will walk in the ways that your father, David, was walking, and obey my commandment, I will raise your throne on Israel forever, as I spoke to your father. So the Lord revealed himself in a special way to Solomon the king. But Solomon could not hold his appetite, his lust. He couldn't control his appetite. And he loved women. And he loved women with all colors. With all colors of hair. With all colors of uh, flesh. And he married with many of them. It's written in chapter 11. Verse 1. And King Solomon loved women. Foreigner women, many, the son of Paro, Moabite, Omanite, Adomite, Sadonite, Chitit, from the, enemy, from the Gentiles, that God said to the nation of Israel, you should not be with them. You should not come with them, because they are going to take you away. They are going to take your heart away from the ways of the Lord. With them, Solomon stick to love them. And he had 700 women wife and 300 concubite. Wow! Did you remember the name? <laughs> I don't think so. But this is not the only problem that Solomon has. We can see in, cha in chapter 10, verses 21 to 22. Maybe somebody can read it. Chapter 10, verse 21 and 22. Thank you. Solomon like luxury. It's much better to drink from a cup of gold 
than from a cup of silver. In the eyes of Solomon. Silver was nothing. Just gold. He loved money. Let's continue. 26 to 28. Can somebody read? Okay. Solomon like Osses. It's not that the, there is problem in Osses, but in that time Osses was representing power. So Solomon like power, like money, and like women's. If we will compare it to our days, strength, power, and lust. Strength, money, and lust. Three main things that each one of us need to be aware. And if you will look on many of the leaders, if it's Christian or Messianic leaders, or if it's non-Christian, not believers, they are falling on one of those three elements, subjects. Barbary, last, influence, power. And when God is saying to the nation of Israel in, in Deuteronomy, he's saying exactly the same things. In chapter 17, when you will choose a king, he doesn't need to, go, to love those three things, because he will love them, it will take him away from the Lord. So we need to be aware about those three things. If we are looking on the subject of lust, there we are three people, leaders, that fall in that subject. Solomon, that was the wisest man in the world, fall in it. So if we are wise, it doesn't mean that we will not fall on it. So let's think about the heart. If your heart is fine, David has the heart, according to God, and he fall in it with Bathsheba. So let's think about strength. I will be strong enough and stay against it. What's happened with Samson? He was the stronger man. And he fall in the same issue. So if we will depend about ourselves, if it's our strength, wisdom, or love to the Lord, or the, our heart, not necessarily that we will be able not to fall in that. We need to be aware and be careful. Let's continue with Solomon and see what's happening next. Chapter 11, verse 4. Can somebody read?
Okay, thank you. Solomon grew old. And the things that he prepared in his young age took him away from God. And like I said before, yesterday, Jerusalem is a small city. People could see. And his ladies, his wives, make him build for them temples for the different God. And not only that he built those temples, he went to worship there. They took him astray from the way of the Lord. So now, when we are strong enough and young enough, we need to take away the things that are not from God. So then, when we will become older, those things will not control us. The problem with lust and appetites they are not disappeared when we are going old. If we will not take care of them, they will control us when we will become older. Solomon start good, start well. He had a living example, his father, that start well and finish well. But Solomon gave up to his appetite, to his lust. And in the end of the story, they control him. The Ephesians, they start well. They start very well. They were really, really willing to sacrifice much for the Lord. But years went by. And some, in, in the way, they started to lose the force that moving them, motivate them to love the Lord. And what's happening with us? We came to know the Lord some years ago. Maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years, maybe more. Are we the same like the Ephesians? That we like our comfort and are not willing to sacrifice on the sacrifice of the Lord. Whatever that is asking us. Are we still enthusiasm for the Lord? Or we like to sit near the television or near, near the computer and play a bit. The Lord is continue to asking us to be enthusiasm for him. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Romans 12, 11. Can somebody read? Read it again, please. Be fervent in spirit in serving the Lord. This is the call of God to our life, even today. Okay. So now, after that we look on those things, let's go back to the conversation that Jesus had with Peter. John chapter 21. John chapter 21, verse 15. If somebody can read.
Thank you. Okay. I'm not going to speak about the Greek. I'm speaking just about the English and the, in my version, it's Hebrew. Greek, maybe somebody else will speak about it. Peter, John is, Jesus is asking three times, do you love me? And Peter is saying three times the same question, the same answer, I love you. But then in each time that Jesus, uh, after the, 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 uh, Peter is answering, Jesus is giving a command to Peter. And the command, it's about the sheep. First, the first commandment, command, the first, is saying to Peter, feed my lamb. And then, lead my sheep, and then shepherd or feed my flock, my sheep. And if we will look on the work of the shepherd, he's waking up in the morning, what he's doing first? Going to feed the little ones. We need to take care of the little ones. This is what that we have done with our kids. We are taking care about the little ones. So we are feeding the little ones. And then we are leading all the group to the pastors, to the place that they can eat. And then they are eating. And we are taking care. I mean, the, the shepherd is taking care of them, that the wolf will not come, that the animal, the, the beast will not come and eat them, and so on. The loving, tender care of a shepherd to his sheep. Can you compare the work of a shepherd to the work of a fisherman? Try to imagine. In the morning, the fisherman is coming to the boat. Take a fish and start to feed him. And start to say, oh, what a lovely fish. I love you so much. I will call you... Moshe. It's a ridiculous. But this is the work of the shepherd. He's coming to the little lambs, he's hugging them, he's patting them, giving them the milk, giving them whatever that they need. When there is a, a sheep that is, a, has a problem in his leg, so he's taking care of it. He called them by name. He knows them. We don't know the difference between one to another. But the shepherd knows. This is his work. His heart is for the sheep. The job of Peter was a fisherman. What is this job? Taking the fish to the boat... And then you have about half a second to decide if this fish is good, into the boat. If not, outside of, of the boat. You're not starting to speak with the fish, look if this is a good thing for breakfast or not. You're not doing this kind of things. You're in the sun a lot of the time. Suffering the, 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 the sun and the cold weather and so on. A shepherd, it's completely different things. And what did the Lord want to do here? He wants to change this rough fisherman to a tender heart pastor. This is not an easy job. This is not an easy uh, uh, task. And this is what it, Jesus is doing here. Changing the heart of this rough fisherman to become a tender pastor. And this is what it, the Lord wants to do with each one of us. Not that all of us are going to be pastor, but to change our heart to what God 
want for you in your life. Jesus wants to change us, to form us to what the T is for us. And again, I can ask the question that Jesus asked Peter. But in this time, think that Jesus is asking you this question. Do you love me? If you love me, are you willing to change to what that I have for you? Do you love me? Keep my commandment. Do you love me? Watch your eyes in what that you are looking. If you love me, love your wife. If you love me, love your husband. Submit to your husband. If you love me, take care about your kids. If you love me, do your work as you are doing it for me. If you love me, restrain your appetite. Remember when we said in the beginning that seven people were in those boat, were in this boat, and John mentioned just five. Who are the two others? The two others, it's me and you. It's like John is writing to us this letter. Are you willing to change because you love me? And this is the question that Jesus is asking even now, us, today. He loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And he won't that we will love him in that way. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you show your great love to us by dying for us on the cross. And Lord, today we want to say to you that we love you. Help us to change our life to what that you have for us. In your precious name. Amen.